after all right but before i show you the cd part let me show you again give you i'll give you a small recap of what is it which we're working on uh, how our ci pipeline looks like how it is structured i'll spend like just like three two three minutes for the benefit of the people who have missed yesterday's session so let me quickly show what we covered and what we discussed so i'll open this diagram this wonderful diagram which i created yesterday with lots and lots of trouble because of my slow pc at the moment but still let me open it hmm. okay so so far how we were doing things what we were doing was uh, we had one project and one project we were trying to create add gitlab hyphen ci.yml file there and we were putting in jobs inside and then jobs were running and then that's how we were trying to build our software build our component um docker build helm build and deploy we haven't done helm deploy yet but that will that part i'll show today but so far the way we have been working was one single project one single gitlab file but we wanted to move away from that approach why because in a real enterprise level setup you will not be doing one single project with just one single gitlab file as a devops engineer or a cicd engineer you will you will have to manage and maintain multiple projects that is to say multiple repository and each repository can have multiple projects and each projects can have multiple components right so this is a problem statement of an actual enterprise level setup and you cannot solve this just by writing one gitlab file it would become very very bulky not clean and you will have really nightmare situation where you want to write the same gitlab file for multiple projects uh, it's just not maintainable and not a good idea so to solve this there are different approaches possible right so conceptually whatever we have learned so far in gitlab conceptually everything is same sorry so so everything is same that is to say uh, and irrespective of gitlab we learned what is a ci pipeline what is a cd pipeline and this pipeline are made up of stages and these stages uh, remain constant the way you implement these stages are constant across different platforms so it's not only about gitlab what i'm trying to highlight is irrespective of if you have your project is using gitlab or jenkins or whatever platform csd platform it is using these concepts will apply exactly the same right and even now when we are restructuring and reorganizing our pipeline and jobs the concept underlying concept will still remain the same that is whatever we are going to put in those jobs uh, is going to be exactly exactly the same the way we have learned in the past okay now how we are structuring it so this bigger block is 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 your project let's say one project here let's say represents one repository a separate repository and imagine you have hundred such repositories and if you were to write those pipelines gitlab pipeline for all of these projects it will be very very cumbersome task so you should avoid doing it rather instead of writing gitlab files and writing jobs there and all those files the good idea is that you will go and create a separate project where you're going to save these reusable jobs so by the way for each project there has to be a gitlab file so you cannot avoid avoid having a dot gitlab dot hyphen ci dot yml file for all of these projects. That file has to be there because that's how gitlab would know what is to be executed. But what I'm trying to highlight here, the jobs which are going to be using inside those, jo bhi job, jo files kanda jo bhi ab job likhoge, those jobs are not directly being placed there. Rather, those jobs are placed in a separate repository. A separate repository mein hum un jobs ko likhenge. A separate repository here. It's called as reusable jobs, which I can quickly show you where I have that. So Akash Lab. So Akash Lab has a uh, has multiple repositories, and one of those repository is GitLab reusable jobs. This is what which I control. As a DevOps engineer, engineer only I can have access to it. Only I can manipulate it. I can maintain it. And this is where I have kept these two files. 
and these two files are under templates these are build jobs and security jobs so in security jobs i have these jobs placed unit test sas scan maven sas js go python this i added just today this wasn't there before so there are two different approaches for a sas right for for java based project i'm using maven to scan my source code and for other J, uh, J javascript go and python some other way some other technology stack if i have I have in a, and I have to do a SAS there, and then I will use some different approach. I haven't written it myself. I have copied it from Sonar. So when you go to Sonar and you say I have a SA I want to do a Sonar scan on a JavaScript project, it generates this snippet. So I have copied it from there, but it's quite explain uh, explanatory. If you see in the image, yeah, my pass image hai. Ye Sonar ki image hai. Sonar uh, maintains this image, Sonar Cloud maintains this image and I'm using that and this automatically should scan my any project which is JavaScript, Go or Python based or C Sharp or C++ based. Okay, so I added this here. Uh, so when I have to scan the uh, JavaScript project, I will use the job SAS JS goes Python and if I were to use uh, scan a Maven based project, I will be using SAS scan Maven. Uh, guys, just to confirm, my voice is loud and clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks, thanks. Um, okay. All right. So this is how you maintain jobs. If I have security jobs .yml, I am placing all my security jobs here. So secret detection, container scanning is here. I should can also go ahead and add dependency scanning job here, which I don't have at the moment because I was using Snyke. But I am going to add some dependency scanning job as well here explicitly so that can be used very in a Okay. Uh, Princey knows something. Princey, can you please go on mute? Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, right. And second job which I have here is build jobs.yaml. And here I have, I had two jobs, which is Helm build and Docker build. But now today I have one more, which is Helm deploy. So this is what I will try to explain today. This is something which I wrote just today, just before like two, three hours back. Uh, it gave me some hard time configuring this um, because we are trying to deploy our application on AWS EKS cluster. A uh, few things was not, were not working. I was trying to struggle. I struggled a lot with it. Like not a lot, like two, three hours, uh, but I made it uh, work. So I'll try to explain how, how this looks and how this works in a while. But right now I'm giving just, let me finish this quick recap, which I was giving originally. So these are my reusable jobs. And these reusable jobs are, uh, are something which uh, can help you maintaining multiple projects within the organization. Um, right, so this is a very, very important and very, very professional way of handling handling your pipelines. Second concept which I used here was of components, that is, that is a parent and child uh, pipelines. Now this can happen uh, where you have a single project, but single project have multiple separate projects which is which are to be scanned and built and deployed separately. Right, and that is the case. Then you can divide those pipelines within the project is, itself. You see, there are two different con are, these are two different concepts. So don't get confused that that I you may argue that I'm also doing the same here. It's not the same. It's very very different. Here in this file, I only have in these reusable jobs. All I have is reusable jobs. That's it. No pipeline, nothing. No stages, uh, no uh, rules, uh, and nothing. No artifacts, nothing. I have just simple plain jobs defined here, but in these, they are these are like full-fledged pipelines in its own right. And these are the pipelines which gets executed. Jobs doesn't get executed automatically. Here, all I have is jobs. These are actual pipelines. But there, here I have divided these in pipelines into multiple pipelines, actual pipelines, and that I have provided uh, a link of all these child component pipelines into the parent. So parent will decide which pipeline to run based on what is changed. Okay, uh, and I'll show you that. So I have this 
doctor everywhere reference app rather i open it here maybe it makes more sense better ui here so I, this is my project this is project one let's say and this project one i have four components so one is appointments api is one component doctor api another component patient api another component and ui view another component four components the other folders which you are seeing are something which is let's say in a supporting role they are not really a software component rather for example post deploy test will contain tests uh, and etc and ignore the aws lambda and shell scripts folder then i have one parent ci ml file which is this file okay and if i go back and here i am simply mentioning the name of my components component 1 component 2 component 3 component 4 and I'm saying once anything changes within this component, please trigger a pipeline which is placed inside this component. Same thing goes with doctor's API, same thing goes with patient API. If anything changes in patient API, please go ahead and do something here. Um, and, uh, and trigger this pipeline, patient API, GitLab, CI, EML, right? So this is my, you may be parent API, sorry, parent uh, pipeline, right? This is a parent pipeline. And how this works, again, this works if is specific component may kuch bhi change hoga, aap yahan kuch aur rules bhi dal sakte ho. You can put some other rules. And uh, whatever is being changed, uh, I'm instructing that this pipeline, iske andar jo GitLab CIML rakhi, is folder ke andar, wo run ho jani chahiye. Ye folder kahan par hai? This folder is outside, right? So all these folders are placed here. If I go inside, now this is my child pipeline and this is where I have put the instructions of appointments API. I'm not putting any instruction for anything else. I'm just putting instructions of appointment API. So appointment API will have these stages, test, build, post, Docker, build, deploy, post, deploy, unit test, then secret detection, then SAS scan, container scanning, Docker build, Helm build, Helm deploy, and post deploy test and test, which I have not written yet. I want to do this. I wanted to do this, but I, could. I did not get enough time before the session to complete this as well because I got a bit stuck with here. So I managed to complete this, but these things, two things, I couldn't do it. Uh, but I will try to write this also because I want to demonstrate to you a full fledged working pipeline with all the stages. So I don't want to miss any stage. And I, I like to show you the actual implementation of all the stages. So this is on me. I have this in my backlog. I'll complete this. But for now today, let's focus on the deployment part. So this I added today. And if you notice, I don't have any instructions here, right? Why? Because the instructions on what is to be done in these uh, jobs is present under extends Helm build. And this is a job which is coming from, if you see at the top of my child pipeline, I have mentioned the repository name and the file name, right? So this is representing this okay so if you want to make use of jobs which is which is written here agar aap use karna chahte ho un jobs ko jo yahan likhe hue hain then you will have to go ahead and enter this in your pipeline like this okay so once you do this for example in any of the pipeline the power of this will go will come here Okay, so if you write this snippet here, then all the jobs which are defined here can be used here. So this is what I'm trying to explain here. Okay, and and the way to do this is you extend. Okay, so you I'll also paste this part here so that place it here. Okay, it's like this. So then you can use the job defined here using the keyword extends. Can I make it a bit bigger? I don't know. Anyway, so I can use this extends part. Can I make it in the line? Oh, yes, I can. Okay. So this job unit test is defined inside this file. And from this file, I'm putting this snippet and this snippet here. And then I can make use of a job defined in usable jobs. Okay. So this much is what we covered yesterday. I gave you a quick recap. Assuming that few of you may not understood it fully, 
or also the of the fact because we have some new guys today yesterday it was like 14 people now we have six more so for the benefit of those six who joined only today and not yesterday uh, this is what we covered yesterday so this is a professional more enterprise level enterprise manner of how you should be handling your pipelines and as i am telling you again this is not only about gitlab so don't take this the takeaway from these sessions is not about gitlab i never intend to teach you gitlab my objective was to explain you ci cd what is ci what is cd how it all works and so that you can use the same concepts anywhere with any platform any jenkins github travis ci circle ci whatever you can use the same concept everywhere only syntaxes will change but the underlying concept will still remain the same jenkins the same thing can happen you can define these uh, jenkins jobs in groovy format somewhere in separate repository from there they can be picked up and can be inserted in the specific jenkins files right the same concept applies everywhere okay um now before i proceed further any questions okay uh, one last thing i forgot to tell is uh, so we have uh, this is the job i called which is extending unit test and if i want to customize these jobs for example i will have variables basically so whatever i do here uh, in variables the actual variables with inside the reusable jobs will get overridden so for example uh, if i go to i'll open this here now for example if i have build jobs and i have these variables created here or maybe maybe here in helm deploy i have these variables and i i don't have these values here so for example if i directly run helm deploy it will fail because it doesn't have all these variables here right so what happen what is happening behind the scene is when i am extending this so whatever job i have for example i have gitlab gitlab yaml here and here i am saying i want to i am having another helm deploy job which is extending the helm helm deploy job and then here i am passing my variables so whatever variables i am passing from here this will get saved to the actual job which is going to run so actual job which is going to be running is helm deploy which is here and yahan jo variables hain they will get overridden by the values which i am sending from the extended job which is present in my actual pipeline okay so this is how it all works okay uh if there are no questions let me proceed okay so what did i do now today we, as i told you we are going to be talking about helm deploy helm deploy the response to cd that is the continuous deployment so i am talking about continuous deployment because ci which is also called as continuous integration and these are two different words but used together continuous integration and continuous deployment continuous integration means that you are uh, running your pipeline running the test sorry running the scan security scans test unit test all those things and then building so the build part and the and the saving or converting those that uh, source code to an artifact or some kind of runnable library or library or whatever or docker image all that is a part of ci continuous integration right so in our case because we are our application is fully dockerized we have two sort of things which we want to uh, build one is our docker image so basically first you do a source code build you compile it compiled version of the code you place inside a docker image then you build a docker image you push the docker image then you create a helm helm build what is helm build in helm build you save the instructions how the application will be deployed so deployment ke jo instructions hai wo helm mein save hote hain right so docker build is about creating a docker build and helm build is all about uh, instructions how to deploy the application but that's it so helm build till helm helm build we call this is a ci continuous integration continuous integration ke jo stages hain usually are only till helm build okay uh but after that 
comes the continuous deployment part. In the continuous deployment part, for now, since we have fully Dockerized environment, we had just one stage. That is a deployment stage. And the deployment stage, we are simply running one specific job called as Helm Deploy. Now, Helm Deploy here simply means that you want to deploy the Helm package which you created when you were running the CI. When you were CI, you had the Helm build package was there which got built and pushed somewhere to a repository system, right? Now, in the Helm Deploy part, we are going taking it bit ahead where we are actually deploying it. Okay. Now we'll talk about different ways of doing CD. As I told you, there is two ways, push based and pull based. Right. In the Helm deploy. Okay. Uh, just a rough question. Maybe you don't know it, but just a for general understanding. What do you think Helm deploy is? Is it a push based or is it a pull based? Uh, I think that is pull-based. Okay. Pull-based. Uh, Any other answer? Push-based, yes, sir. Mm, okay. So answer is actually, right, push-based. Why push-based? Push and pull here uh, is, is about the cluster and environment where you're deploying it to, right? So environment which we have here is, let's say, Kubernetes cluster. Jo humne EKS, EKS cluster banaya hai, that is our environment. And Helm deploy is very similar to we are pushing something into the cluster. So EKS cluster hai and we are, when we are saying Helm deploy or Helm upgrade, Helm install, we are actually pushing our things inside the cluster. So that's why it's called as push based. Okay. In, co in contrast to this, there is also something called as push, uh, sorry, pull based. Pull based, I have never told you. I've never explained it. We have never talked about it, but there is also a strategy called as pull base, which is actually getting a lot of traction. We try to understand this concept today. Maybe I'll not show you the demo part. Maybe in the future, maybe in the next subsequent class, I'll show you the demo part because it's actually quite, quite uh, gaining attention and a lot of people are actually using it. So, so to say Git ops approach, there's also this term as uh, term called as Git ops. A Git ops naam ki ek terminology start hai. Uh, which is not new, it's quite uh, there since some time. And here it's all about running your operations based on Git specifications of the application. But again, not a topic for today. But understanding of this pull based and push based is important for you because you need to understand uh, two basic approaches. One basic approach, one approach is the push based, which we But what is pull based, we will try to look into it as well, uh, at least in a theoretical aspects of it. Okay, so Helm deploy. So we'll talk about Helm deploy now. So how did I, uh, let, let me jump into the, how, how I actually I created um, this job. And then I'll show you something in the AWS also. So first thing first, before even I have to write, I can go ahead and write my uh, Helm deploy. I need a cluster, right? Which you know already that you need a cluster. There are different ways of doing that. Uh, GCP gives you EKS cluster, which sorry, not EKS cluster. GC gives you a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster called a GKE. Azure gives gives you some cl one cluster, I think called as AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service, and then AWS gives you. But these are not the only three who give you. There are many, many, many players in the market. HP has, then you have Alibaba, then you have many, many such players which can gives you, of course, paid service of your cluster. So depending on which cluster you are using, the settings changes. Okay, since I'm using AWS EKS, the setting to access that server, uh, few things have changed. How can I go ahead and access it uh, and deploy my changes there? Because to access any uh, cluster, you need some authentication. And there is a way to, different ways are there to configure different clusters, but underlying uh, principles, are still the same because you're going to you're going to be deploying your changes using kubectl or helm right so kubectl helm works exactly the same way irrespective of which cluster you have what changes is the authentication part the kube config part or or kubernetes context part which let's just try to go through um how we are we we, we uh, how i have done this in aws side 
but the as i said few settings will be different but more or less it will remain the same so before i go forward let me show you see guys i am trying to explain this from very basic a uh, few of these things i have narrated many times in the past but as i am not sure how many of you are at what level maybe some of you are still struggling with basic things some of you are a bit advanced uh, but i'm assuming a lot of you are not here yet you will have to do some more assignments because we are really jumping into the bit advanced part now so the, it's it's okay agar samajh mein nahi aa raha hai to okay it's, it's still okay agar aapko nahi samajh mein aa raha hai because i'm myself is saying this is a bit advanced things agar aapne basic assignments nahi kiye in the past uh, then you may find some complication here ki ye kya ho raha hai but even if you are able to understand this at least 30% of what i am explaining is still a win for me as well as you so that you know okay this is what i have to do this is what is happening i haven't done this uh, but i am understanding what's happening itna bhi agar aapko hint aa raha hai that still is enough for me basically because this thing doesn't come overnight you have to really struggle and do things for weeks and months to really reach at this level what i am trying to show you right now okay so before i go any forward let me just show you basic thing so we need a cluster so the way to create cluster i have installed software or a command line utility called as ekctl how why did i do that because when i go to my aws and eks it tells me that i can use this uh to have this in eks ctl getting started so if i go to eks getting started guide it tells me i can use eks ctl to create my eks cluster okay so it it supports this tool and this is actually very very good tool i mean far far better than terraform okay if it come it if it um it is something to do with um i mean the only the, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of resources which needs to be created when you want to do a kubernetes uh, service when you need to create a new cluster lot of things has to be done and aws in itself is actually bit complicated because if you want to do this in gke google cloud service things have become things are bit easier there uh, compared to aws because aws gives you lot lot much flexibility a lot of flexibility and that's why it is bit bit complicated there and terraform and cloud formation and all those things are there for you to really create those cluster uh, but in terraform also you have to configure all those resources manually and again that's why creating eks cluster you are terraform may not be that good an idea it can still be good idea but still i would still support eksctl in the uh, in, um um in uh, against terraform in this case okay but if you still if you want to use terraform please use it and actually i will also show you that i because when we will we will will go ahead and learn terraform i will try using this example of how to create a cluster using terraform so anyway we will learning it but i will still propose if you are having aws setup use eks ctl here a lot of things are abstracted from the user you just have to configure something in your config.yml file cluster config.yml file which i have done if i go here i have uh, my iac repository i go here i have a file called as config. oh not this one sorry cluster.yml here this is very minimalist nothing much here uh, but uh, basic settings so you can try putting in lot many things here uh, and it's really simple to understand not like big main dot terraform files a lot of easy things here so api version kind metadata node groups uh, name instance type desired capacity min size and uh, max size and min size and i can also provide my ssh pem file or cert file from here as well so that i can log in into my machines which it will go ahead and create right and here i am using a t2 large with desired capacity of only a single node and that's all i need and then i would go ahead and do create cluster and i will just copy this and paste it i can also provide a cube config file of my own but i don't want to do it because ekctl automatically generates a cube config file which is of very importance for us at the moment because we are going to be using it to connect uh, our 
GitLab to the cluster. Okay, so reason I'm explaining you EKCTL right now because I want to show you what file EKCTL generates after the cluster is created. So EKCTL create cluster. Once you do this part, so it will take um, usually 10 minutes maybe or five minutes. So it started at 35, uh, sorry, at 49. And then, yeah, it took me, took like 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for creating all the things. So once it, it completed the job, the cluster was up and running, right? But it also did one thing. What it did is it created a cube config file. Now, what is a cube config file? A cube config file is something which gets automatically saved somewhere here. Okay, so cube config file is a file which is actually under your username. Actually, you have to go, if you are really new to this, you go to C drive, you go to user, you select the, your username, and here you have a lot of dot, 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 dot folders. And here you have to go to dot Q folder. And inside dot Q folder, you will have a config file. Now, this is a cube config file, right? Why do we need to do, use this? Because when you do a kubectl command, kubectl command automatically will come here. Wo kubectl command, Kuch bhi run karne ke pehle yahan aega. Aake check karega yahan pe credential hai kya. Because to connect to that specific cluster, it needs credentials. Some sort of authentication and authorization, isn't it? Otherwise, you connect nahi kar paega. When you say kubectl get pods, it needs some file. Okay, and that file and that certification and that authentication, authorization information is placed inside this file. So I will open this. Actually, I have was trying out something. So I have copied in config one, but originally it will be in config. And this will be a YAML file, which would look like this. I am exposing my certificate here, but nothing to worry because I'm going to be deleting my cluster completely. So even if this is leaked, still fine. So it has only two very important piece, certificate authority data server. I did not create this. Who created this? Automatically, the moment Jesse mein ye cluster banaya. Jesse mein EKS create cluster ye kiya na. That once this is done, it actually added the cube config details in my config file. Yahan pe kya bhi raha hai? Qctl command should work with this file because it has saved this file. Ekctl is smart enough to to save those details back into my config file. So when I do kubectl now, it will know. Kis cheese ko at attach karna hai. Kis cluster se link karna hai. Kaha ki details uh, leki aani hai using kubectl. Okay. So far so good guys. Any Anything to ask? Okay. Now, now let's, okay. I am missing some part here. Okay. Let me explain that because I want to touch on, touch base on basic things today. I don't want to skip anything. Uh, I'm assuming everyone is super fresh today. Okay. So EKCTL is a tool which will not just work out of the box. It's not like you have a fresh system, you install EKCTL there, it will just start working. No. To make sure that EKCTL works, you need to do certain, some more things. That is, you AWS to create some credentials in AWS. If I go back to EKCTL, uh, install. Uh, if I go here, I think there's some set of instructions placed here. Or so you need uh, certain tools, okay? You need AWS CLI and you need some sort of AWS authenticator. Okay. So what are these? I have tried writing it down in one of the README document. Here or, or here. Um, uh, maybe at the parent one, okay, not here as well. Sorry. Ah, here. Okay. So what you need is you need some binaries installation. Okay. Now, because God willed it, I, I had to switch to a window system and I had to do all these installations again. So it's quite fresh in my mind. If you have a window system, which I think most of you have, then how you will go ahead and do installation. So you need three 
four things basically. You need four things. You need AWS CLI, you need kubectl, you need ekctl, you need AWS IAM authenticator binary as well. So these four things you need. Uh, I have provided the link here so that you can just go to these links and download. Uh, once you download, uh, so AWS CLI is just, uh, I think is installer. kubectl, ekctl, and AWS IAM authenticator are binaries. What are binaries? Binaries means wo install nahi hoga. It doesn't install. They look like this. EKCTL, Helm, kubectl, they, they are like more like an application. Okay, and and they will just not automatically work. So what you have to do is you have to copy this path. Jahan bhi aapne save kiya. Maine isko akash ke ek bin folder apna custom naam se banaya. Aap kuch bhi isko ABCD de sakte ho. I'm using bin representing binaries. And I've copied this and I have saved this in the environment variables. I will enter env. And I come here and here in the environment variables, the system properties and environment variables in the path, I have placed this here, this path here. So automatically once I, I'm, I'm done with this, command or PowerShell dono uh, will start identifying the commands uh, for these application. So as soon as I write kubectl, it will open run this application automatically and, and do the job. So this is what uh, something which you have to do. So AWS CLI, you will not see here because AWS CLI, when I went to Amazon, uh, they gave me an installer, a Windows installer, and I just downloaded it. Uh, and I ran it and it just installed, automatically installed. But other four things, AWS IAM Authenticator, EKCTL, Helm, and kubectl, if you have not installed anything from Windows, pe, so you can do it now too. And this doesn't cost anything in the sense memory and CPU. These are simple application. If your deployment, if your server is also on the cloud, it's still is okay because even if you have low configuration system, you can still run these commands because your actual processing is not happening on your machine, right? And you need these four, four things. Okay, so this is how you do the installation. And once you do that, then EKCTL command will start working for you. Having said that, once you are done with the AWS CLI, then you also, one more thing you have to do is you go to C and you go to users and you go to again the same folder and then you there is a folder called as dot AWS and inside AWS, you will have a config and a credential. In the config file, you have to mention what you have to mention uh, what are what is the default region for you and the credentials i will not open it but credentials you will have access key and secret id this you have to get from aws if you don't know still don't know how to do this uh, i would i would recommend you guys to please just google it and if you have an aws account you have to go to iam and go to access key and secret key and then it just generates for you and you download it and place it here okay so these this is a bare minimum setup for you to create a cluster on EKS CTL, uh, create a cluster using EKS CTL. Um, and this creates a AWS um, EKS cluster. I, I think it's better I open it also because few of you were raising that this is not working and that is not working. Let me quickly check that also. Next. Sign in. Nine nine nine. Okay, I'm on to my management console. I will go to my cluster okay and if i go to so this is my development cluster which is active this is what i created using my ekctl and if i go inside i'm able to see all the things so compute resources, overview. This is my certificate authority 
um this is actually what i was showing you earlier you remember cube config i was showing cube, cube config this is that certificate data anyway um then i scroll i go to resources i go to pods in the pods i have just one service running this one um but i am able to see so let me ask you guys you guys were raising a lot of questions ki wo pod nahi chal raha hai aur service nahi chal rahi hai aur dikh nahi raha hai so i am i am able to see all these things here i think few of you were raising this earlier um but i am not able to see so i am able to see everything so akash the thing was that uh, when you create an iam role and then you create uh, use eksctl to uh, spin up a cluster eks cluster then you will not be able to see all this uh, you are using the iam you are using your root user directly to create this cluster Okay. Uh, what so, we did was so so this confirms one thing that there is no problem with eksctl there is problem with the user right because i am you are right i am using root user and since i am using root user it has all the access everywhere so what i will do next is as i as i promise maybe in the next session i will try to show you how you can use eksctl with a specific user which where we are giving it the right permissions okay uh, that still is in my backlog let me come come back to you so one thing is is confirmed uh that it doesn't work if you are if you are missing a policy of some sort so can can we safely say that uh, is it okay if, uh, yeah so i mean if you are missing like uh, yesterday i had not put load balancer then my load ba load balancer didn't work right right so whatever your service you need you need to provide that policy so i will try to add a policy of load balancer as well as i will try to put something for api gateway also because i may be using it maybe something on ingresses maybe uh, we'll see we we'll see what else we need uh, but load balancer is something which you can directly configure from your kubernetes file so i think that is definitely you need to provide as a permission uh, so i'll try to do that okay again please um, uh, bear with me for next till next week at least okay but yeah so this was original issue which you all were highlighting i think it was primarily to do something with iam policy so that much we know now and i'll try to show the best uh, solution for that okay so this is how you see the cluster is up and running and all those things and all the details on how to access this cluster is saved here okay what next so the next part which we need to work on is the deployment part so we want our pipeline so that a pipeline have a, has a stage and that stage will go ahead and deploy my payload by payload me by payload i mean helm package to that cluster okay now let's see i'll take an example of appointments api okay so if i go here uh, stages are pretty good pretty sorry pretty clear docker build hai then we have helm build and then we have helm deploy docker build and helm build the output of these jobs is docker will build will create the docker image and it will push it to docker hub let me also show that so that you know you get the perspective docker hub docker hub okay here so i have this appointments chart and appointments api if i go inside appointments api whatever image which is being created is getting saved here so i just an hour ago i have this new version which of the image which is coming here this specific id is nothing but the commit id or sha or also called as sha sha also called as digest this is the commit id a short version of the commit id which is a unique identifier for that image so i'm using the strategy of tagging or let's say docker image tagging strategy which i'm using is tagging my images with the specific commit id for that change because every time you are making a change in your component uh, indicates that there is something new there so for everything which is new you generate a new image tag it with a specific unique id and commit id is a unique id which you get once you do a commit 
right? So this is what I'm using as a tag here. So tag here is ADA21F89, which represents a commit ID in my Git, a Git commit ID. Then second thing which I'm doing is the chart. So if I go to appointments chart, this is where I will have these versions, okay? Right now, if you notice, I'm using 0.0.1, but this can also be modified. 0.0.1 is coming from um, the version of the application. Right now, I'm simply saying 0.0.1, attached, attaching it with the specific commit ID, okay? But this can be changed. The approach which I'm using here is quite basic one, but this can also be changed. Okay, but this is how I'm also versioning my Helm charts. And both are, are getting saved in a different repositories. Uh, for I've done this for a purpose. I could have also used just one repository for both the things. But I'm for creating a specific distinction between the, the two, I have trying to do this as a separate repository. So uh, sare components, ke liye, I have four components, right? Appointments, chart, patient chart, doctor chart, uh, and view UI chart, which is this one. So I've kept this, all of this as a separate repository as well as four image repositories, Docker image repositories. Okay, and why, how the images are coming here? Because of Docker build and Helm build. So Helm build and Docker build, the output of this is that it is building it and publishing it. We have gone through this many, many times in the past. Uh, so this is how it's doing, just quick, quick walkthrough. Docker build, I'm using Docker in Docker approach of building it, Docker login, Docker build, Docker push. And these are how I'm passing the variables, username, token, file path, image name, and tag name. Tag name is coming from the parent, which is Docker tag. Docker tag is coming from Docker tag here, which is nothing but a CI commit short SHA. This is uh, a default variable. A, a predefined variable in GitLab. So this is what, how I'm getting the short shot. Okay, now same thing is happening with the, with the Helm. So if I quickly go to the Helm here, the same thing is happening with the Helm build, which is this one. But here we am trying to do more things. This I already explained yesterday. I'll try not to go again in detail, but as simple, um, uh, just to explain simply, I'm using this DTZR Helm kubectl image, which has kubectl Helm both the commands. And then I am trying to set something said here is changing certain values in the chart. And then I'm simply saying Helm package, Helm registry login and Helm push. So Helm push and Docker push are the two commands, which is pushing my artifacts. So these, this is where CI ends. This is what I was talking about. This is where CI complete. CI complete ho jata hai par, okay? Because we build kar diya Docker ko, we build kar diya Helm ko, we push kar diya. Doc, Helm deploy. Now we have come to the original uh, topic of the day. Uh, I know few of you may be getting bored because you already know all these things. We have done this in the past many times, but I think it doesn't hurt to get some revision as well as it's for also the people who are a bit uh, behind can also get benefit from a revised topic. Um, now let's understand Helm deploy. Helm deploy, you see what I'm using. I'm using the same, same image which I used here, which is Helm kubectl 3.13.0. I'm also using DTZR Helm kubectl 3.13.0. Then I have certain, certain variables here, which are more, more or less they are empty. Uh, the values of this is actually going to be coming from the outside, that is whoever is calling this job, they will also supply the variables. Who is calling this job? Uh, my pipelines here, right? So these are my pipelines. And this job, which is extending Helm deploy, this is calling this job and supplying the variables. The moment this gets executed, it will go past the control to build job here. And then this gets executed. And don't get confused with the name. Name can be anything. What's in the name, right? It's not, I've, it just happened to be the same name, but it can be anything. It can have any name here, whatever. Okay, cool. Um, I'll go back to the uh, actual job. Then I'm doing something under before script, and then I'm doing something in the script. What I'm doing in the before script. Now, to make sure that your Helm 
and kubectl works you need aws credentials right uh and how can you supply the aws credentials the way we were doing on local machine we were supplying it from a dot aws folder right but since we are on a dockerized environment in an inside an image there's no need really to do, to do that what you can really do is you can create an environment variable just using command line export keyword so you can do an export and say aws access key id aws secret access key and aws region and assign it to the ci pipeline variable now what is ci pipeline variable i think most of you know that you create these variables from you go to the group level you go to a group so akash lab is my group which under which i have all these projects and here i have settings i have ci cd and i have variables I open variables and here i will have these variables created AWS access key, AWS, AWS region, AWS secret access key. So these three variables I have here and the value to these are exactly similar to what you would go ahead and save here. Sorry, in credentials. I will not open it because these are, I have the root access uh, credentials here. I will, don't want to expose this in a video. So uh, I'll not open it, but that is what I have saved inside these three. Access key ID, region, secret access key. If you don't have this, you have to go to AWS platform, go to IAM, go to the user, and there you will find an option to generate these keys for you for different use, different users. Okay, um, go back. Okay, so you need this. The, you need this three things, export. Okay, now what else? Once you do this, then you need something else you would need something called as AWS IAM Authenticator. And truth be told, I wasn't aware that this is also required here because on my local, I did that, but I was thinking that uh, I can provide my cube config in some way and then still can work. And I was wrong. And then uh, it turned out that I have to actually go ahead and install this also. Because otherwise AWS, the way AWS authenticates from command line is a bit different. It's not exactly uh, very token oriented. It, it has more, more things to it. So you need this tool called as, this command line utility called as AWS IAM Authenticator. And if you notice, I already have it. I already have this in my bin folder, right? I have this here, AWS IAM Authenticator. So this is required for you to authenticate with EKS cluster. Okay, and the way to do that is I'm using curl to download it. Okay, you see, I'm using curl download, download it. Who told me how to do this? Because you guys always ask this question. Aapko kaise pata? How did you know? I didn't know. I went to the official documentation of AWS and I found this key, this thing there and I am using it. So a lot of things you cannot know on your own. What whoever is the creator of that specific component or software, they always publish their documentation of how to use it. And you have to go to the documentation and see how they have used it and then use it in your own implementation. So they had this um, snippet sorry, on how... To... Yeah, sorry, go on. So I have uh, a question over here. I yeah. was going through this uh, I am Auth authenticator mm -hmm. and uh, I just read that if you're running uh, AWS CLI version 1.16.156, mm -hmm. you don't need to install the I am authenticator. Instead, you can get a token using AWS EKS get token command. And then you pre uh, and then you have to uh, put it in your cube config file. Can yes, that very, be used? Very right yes, you're right. So let me open the documentation, AWS EKS Authenticate. So it gives you two ways of doing this, okay? So you need to install your AWS CLI. Okay, let me open this. Oh, oh, not this one. So there are two ways, either you use the get token way of doing it or you, uh, install AWS IAM Authenticator. Okay, so I used this approach because that is what also I was using on my local machine. 
okay and it's eventually it's all about your cube config because cube config you don't have it on this on this uh, dockerized platform you don't have a cube config you you will i'll explain later how i am using it i am using uh, a file which i've kept here so my cube config file is actually kept here uh, this one this is my cube config file and i have sort of oh shit i shouldn't be using this one uh how come i have this here okay this is a bit strange because i modified this to represent something inside where i've kept it let me see huh? give me a minute it was here Uh, close this. Okay, because otherwise my job will stop working. Build jobs. Give me a minute. So what I'm setting here? Okay. Okay. I think I'm. It still work. It will still work. But let me remove the credentials from here. So my secret detection job should work and it will say that I have leaked the credentials here. See your data. Replace this. Uh, server data, replace this. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So what I'm trying so what I'm trying to say is I have saved my cube, cube config file here, and I am actually using using my um, um, I am authenticator here for that. But as I said, as as you just rightly said, there are different ways of doing it. So you install AWS CLI, you install your uh, use use STS or different way of getting the token, and then the token is will come, and then you can use that token to in to authenticate with it. I am not using the that approach, but you can you feel free to use that approach. Okay. Um, let me quickly go back to my original close all build jobs. Right. So the way I am doing it is exactly how I was doing it on my local machine, but you can try different approaches. Uh, uh, getting the token is also one of the approach. I definitely read that also in the official documentation. Uh, so you're right. There is that way also, but I'm using AWS IAM Authenticator. So you can, and Arlene, you can give it a try. Don't use this approach because you have already been aware of some other approach. Try to use that approach um, and then share it with the group so that now we would have two way or ways of doing it. Okay, so I'm installing AWS IAM Authenticator. I am making it executable, and then I am placing it in my under my path so that I can actually use it. Because my EKS CTL actually uses this. Let me open this. If I go to my installation, EKS CTL. Um, This is the installation part. I think that information I read it somewhere here. AWS API credentials uh, should be sufficient. Use AWS credentials, environment variables, documentation. You will also need AWS IAM authenticator for Kubernetes. Either IAM, IAM authenticator or AWS EKS get token. So this is, I think, what you were referring to. Yes, exactly. Arlene, right? So, yes, uh, exactly. so two ways of doing this. One is this one, and that one is another one. So. The point I'm trying to make before this whole con all conversation started is no one is aware about how to do it unless you read the documentation. You don't have to memorize this. For example, I've done it once, so I will have this in my memory. Maybe after two years, I will forget. Or after two years, there's a new thing came up. So you will, you will not know. What is the best way? You go to the documentation and you read it. And you then you understood understand, oh, this is how it can be done. Okay, so two ways. Uh, and I'm not really using e EKS to create my cluster. I actually used uh, EKS CTL, right? 
So in both ways you can try AWS IAM Authenticator or AWS EKS Get Token. Arlene, I request you to please use this approach and, and tell the group as well. So I'll anyway, let's move forward quickly. We are we still have some time anyway. So AWS IAM Authenticator is installed and then my EKS CTL will start working. So I've exported my AWS credentials and I've installed IA, AWS IAM Authenticator. Dono mm -hmm. kar liya, export kar liya, AWS Authenticator ko dal diya, my environment setup is done and I have done this under before script. Okay. Uh, before script, when you have a lot of statements, you can use this syntax. Then you can really do. Otherwise, you can also do step by step, like, wo, uh, do I have it? Like this way, also you can do. Uh, and this way, also you can do. So both ways work. I'm using this approach here a dot and a, a, a hyphen and a slash, and a, sorry, and a pipe. Then what I'm doing, I am doing a Helm deploy. Oh God, sorry. So Helm deploy before script and then let's go to the script part. What I'm doing here. Uh, I showed you a file config.yml, right? This is actu actually my kube config file. Uh, and this is where I got stuck for a few hours because there are two approaches on how you can pass the context. Context means kube uh, CTL context. If you remember, kubectl ke commands jab hum log run kar rahe the if you remember kubectl commands right we are using kubectl and we are saying config config and you are using saying get context ha huh? get context okay so when you are doing this this is how you know ki mere paas mera kubectl kis cluster ko point kar raha hai so you need to always make sure that kubectl is pointing to a specific cluster because you can have many clusters available. Right now, I have only one, but you can eventually have many clusters which you want to manage as a DevOps engineer, right? So you always have to have this information out about clusters. Uh, oh, sorry, context. Context comes from this kubeconfig file, which I was telling you. This is the kubeconfig file. Where is this? Hoti hai? This usually is present in the dot q folder mein config naam ke file mein hoti hai so basically agar aapko cube config chalana hai ya helm chalana hai helm bhi automatically cube config file ko hi refer karta hai internally so agar aapko cube config cube ctl chalana hai ya helm chalana hai aapko usko sahi context provide karna padega tabhi wo chalega context matlab sahi cluster pe point karna padega you have to point this your helm command and cube ctl command to the right cluster okay that is called as context setting Context setting, okay. Now, if I go back to my build jobs here, so you have uh, so what I have done, how I have done this is I have created a template file called as config.yml file. This is my cube config file. How I got this, I copied it from here. I have copied file copy kiya, config file, which is ekctl ke baad automatically generate with it, right? The moment I ran ekctl create cluster. EKCTR create custom ne automatically a file yaha create kia or usme details dal dia. It provide added these details here in this file. I copied this and I copied this and I pasted this in my repository under a config.yml. Okay, but I removed the sensitive information from it. So I removed the sensitive information which was actually the certificate authority data and server. So both of these things I removed. I was also supposed to remove this part also, but it's okay for now. Because it's not that sensitive. It is because I have the URL here. Uh, so the hacker would know what is the URL of my cluster, which is not good. But uh, you can also replace this. But I have two sen most sensitive information uh, I have removed. But how I'm removing this, right? So I have created the template here, but then what I'm doing at runtime, I'm setting it, right? So I'm using said to say config file path, which is config.yml, remove certificate authority data, anything after that, and replace it with the same text, but a different value, which is coming from my CI vars. Config cube config cluster set auth data, cube config cluster server. These two information I have placed inside Auth data plus server data. I can show you this. This is exactly the same file, same value, which I was showing you. I copied it and added it. And server is also exactly the same. So if I go to cancel and open the server, this is exactly the same. One thing to notice here is 
I have added an extra backslash because said will not work otherwise. Uh, we said nahi chalta hai jab hum kisi aise string mein se replacement karte hain jahan pe forward slash ya backward slash hota hai. So I need to go and replace that. Uh, I have to escape, sorry, not replace that, escape it. To escape it, I am using a backslash. So then said can actually uh, make changes, uh, can accept it as a literal string. Okay, so this is the only change I have done. This I also done it somewhere else, which I was explaining earlier, maybe here. You see, but it was uh, that time I was only doing it directly here. When I was doing it, I was doing it here by the way of uh, string uh, substitution. Uh, but this time I have directly done it there so that I don't have to do it here automatically. Okay. So I'll come here. So this is what this set is doing. Set is replacing the values or not replacing sort of injecting the certificate authority and server directly, directly in my config.yml file. Right. Is key value replace karke actual value dal dega. Is key replace karke actual value dal dega. Taki automatically at runtime it becomes this file with the right values. Because without these two values, um, server will not be accessible. Okay. Um, come back, build job. So this is the job of this. What else? Then I think things are pretty obvious because we have done this um, many times. Only difference, only difference here is I am passing a command line argument here like this. So when I am using kubectl on my local, when I say get pods, for example, I'm not passing any cube config because I have my system where there is a cube config file, kubectl automatically goes there, references it, and uses it, right? But when I'm doing it on my platform, I get lab docker image, I don't have the luxury of that file, right? I haven't placed it under any q.q folder and then config folder. I can do that, but I'm, not, I'm choosing not to do that. Instead, I'm directly passing an, a cube config flag and I'm passing the file name. Where is the file name? File is already present within the folder, within the uh, repository, which is also has been replaced with the right values using said. Said se menon values could remove kia and I am using now cube config to so that my cube CTL can then point to the right cluster, which is actually AWS EKS. Take, uh, then I think it's pretty simple. Helm registry login. So I'm, I'm logging to the registry. Why I have to do login? Because without which Helm cannot download the version which it wants to deploy. Then I'm saying Helm pull. So I'm pulling the chart version. It will actually, the real command will look like this. Cube config, config, install, name of the release, then the name of the chart, and then the version, right? Uh, so I'm creating that using parameterized way. Uh, I'm using parameterization here so that I could uh, uh, do that. So that I could uh, create the string and uh, install uh, my application. So I'm using Helm show all. So this is, will, this is how it will show you what is the content of that uh, chart. Template here show you how it really looks like how it would look like when it's deployed. It's still not deployment, but it will just show you how it would look like when it's deployed. And this Helm cube config upgrade installs the hyphen hyphen install release name. The release name is release ka kya naam hai. And then chart path, which is actually this, this thing. And then the version, which is the chart version. This one. I have commented this line. I just kept this so that I can tell you how this file, this line would look like once it's completely constructed and replaced with the actual values. And this eventually deploys my application or that specific Helm chart directly, directly from the uh, GitLab. Okay, now this is what I was trying to show you before the session started. I managed to run the run it, run the job. Let me show you how it looks. So if I go to my build pipelines, and it actually failed. So if I go here, 
I executed, I made changes in all the components and actually only one passed. UI view passed, others actually failed. Let's see. So if I go to appointments API, this appointments API, I go here. These are the stages which got executed, test, build, post Docker build, uh, deploy, and then post deploy did not run, but deploy failed. Let's see why, if I go and open this, you see I have, um, I have less than 30% of the shared runner pipeline minutes remaining. I think it's it was showing this two days back. Uh, maybe it's even less less than 10%, but I think it's going to be reset in next one or two days. So I'm good. Uh, but this happens when you run many run the pipeline many times. And I did execute a lot of jobs in, when I was trying to create this example for you guys. Um, so yeah, um, when you actually would also go and give it a try, this can happen. Uh, but it's okay. I think it is quite, I've tried, I ran this pipeline really quite a lot of time in past three, four days. So this is what is showing me right now, but it's okay. I don't worry because I have two more days and then it will. Actually, I just want to ask you this. So yeah. when this happens uh, in 30, uh, by the 30th of the month, it, uh, it, it will be fine. Is that what, is that what you're saying? Yes. That yes, is that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Okay. My, my pipeline is also stuck like that. So I, I was wondering if I have to buy a new minutes. No, don't buy. I mean, if you have a lot of money, you can buy. I mean, I'm, I'm not stopping you to buy anything, uh, but you don't shouldn't need to because I think it's quite a lot of shared uh, minutes which you get every month, which gets automatically reset after the end of the month. Okay. No, so I was doing the uh, Spring Boot API and I went on, went on, went on and without realizing. And then after this, uh, I reached around uh, 90 or so and then oh. it just stopped. Mm. So... So be very cautious. I mean, don't just run it just for the fun of it. <laughs> try to try to assimilate a lot of changes together and then run it. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. that can happen. Be a bit uh, cautious there. Otherwise, you will get stuck for a whole month and you cannot use it. Anyway, so what's wrong here is uh, it is not able to find... Uh, so it is. it tried to pull the image, but it wasn't available. I don't know why, because if I go here, it is trying to say I'm, I went to appointments API and I tried to pull it, which I know now, I think. So if I go Docker Hub, because the name is different, that's how, that's the problem. I got it now. Let's fix it and then we'll rerun it. So this is called as appointments chart, but it is trying to find under appointments API, the image that is the problem. Okay, um, let's fix it. So if I go here, so this is also, I'm trying to demonstrate what, how the problem comes and how you solve it. You see, I just got to know what is the problem. I opened this before, but I didn't know what's happening. I don't know, uh, just before the session, but now, in front of you, I just seeing it again and I'm seeing, oh, I know what's the problem now because the name, it is saying I'm not able to pull. It's simply saying it's not found. Not found means either there's a problem here or there's a problem here. But then I have, I'm able to find it somewhere here, right? So if I go to chart and I see it, I'm able to see F89, right? And this is what it is, F89. I'm able to see it, but it's the URL which is wrong. It is there under appointments chart and not under appointments API. The reason for that I know now is because I'm passing some wrong value somewhere. So in the Helm deploy, I'm passing the chart path, which is actually registry URL component, which is coming from here where I'm replacing the component name, which is actually appointments API. So this is actually the problem. Uh, I can, I have created a lot of duplicate variables here, which is not a good practice. I need to clean this up, but to make things quickly work, let me say component name for chart. Okay, this is a bad practice guys, huh? don't do this. Uh, I'm creating a lot of unnecessary variables here. You see a lot of duplicacies, I don't want to do it. I don't, but at the same time, I am in a bit hurry because of we are in a session. But in reality, you shouldn't be doing this. It's a bad practice. So I'm simply go ahead and now 
uh, component, right? Uh, Helm registry URL component. So I'll replace this with this one component name chart. Okay, and then I will copy this. I'll let me cut it and let me paste it here for a while so that it's easy for me to copy and paste. And then I will start. Save this, go here, and then uh, uh, oh my bad. Uh, okay, what I'm doing wrong here? Component name chart. Okay, only two things. Doctor. Okay, now copy this again. Uh, okay, I have to replace this here also, is it? Oh, okay, wait, Helm registry component, replace this value. Sorry, I'm doing a bit stupid things of copy and pasting, but uh, right now I think this is the best, fastest way I can think of at the moment. Uh, registry component, registry URL, component chart. I don't want this, so I'll remove this. I'm just saving it at the top and okay so till these three things it's okay i think this one is fine ui and uh, this one actually works so i will not go and touch this one this let's keep it exactly the same um maybe something here just to trigger it okay now i will go ahead and um, and trigger the pipeline helm deploy job fixed okay and i will commit and push now let's see what happens oh commit and push okay it started showing tantrums again i don't know why I'm deploy fixed. Close all. Let me close all the files. I'm sorry for keeping you like this. I think my studio is a bit hanged. Let me try again, commit and push. Okay, it's doing something. Okay, finally. Okay, so I'll go back to my pipeline again, pipelines. And it will run, but um, uh, one hour ago, I think it haven't hasn't started yet, or maybe I've exhausted really exhausted the pipeline. Maybe it's not less than thirty percent. Maybe it's more less than ten percent. Let's see. Yeah, looks like I am. I've exhausted. But anyway, I have a good example to show. Oh, it started running. Cool. So it's running now. Uh, but meanwhile, it runs. Let me show you this pipeline because the three Helm deploy jobs failed, but the fourth one worked, which is the view UI. This one worked. So let me show that. So appointments API, doctor API, patient API, they all failed. View UI, that is a front end, actually worked, which is this one. So SAS scan, secret detection, unit test, they all are failing actually uh, for the front end. Uh, I'm, I will have to go and fix it. But the real thing, real deal, which is the deployment and build part worked. So Docker build worked, Helm build worked, container scanning worked, and then Helm deploy worked. So if I go to Helm deploy, it actually has deployed my build, which is this one. So it deployed it like this. And actually I can also show you, I have actually showed that earlier, but I'll, I'll show it again. So if I open my AWS Amazon EKS cluster, 
I go to resources, pods, and I can see my pod running here, right? And I can also access it locally. So all I have to do is use port forward. So I say kubectl get pods. Uh, by the way, I've already done that, but still. So this is my pod. I will simply say kubectl get pods. Uh, not pods. I'll say port forward. And I'll say that this, I want to port forward a pod. And here I'm saying, please show this on 8080 and pass the traffic to the container at port 80. Okay, and this should show my application. Let me open that. My Let me open my local host. 8080 and yes, my application is up and running here. Okay, what will not work is the API calls, which I'm going to be, or this application is going to be making because my APIs are not running. Okay, if I show, show you that. So I go to get appointments and that get appointment actually shows me the list of all the appointments in the system, but it will not work because you see, I'm seeing an error. The error is, error is it's trying to access localhost 8081 appointment, which is not there. And actually, I also have to replace this with the Kubernetes service URL. So I have to go and make some changes somewhere here. And I have to replace this with the, the right service access of appointments API. And I think that's how it would work. But that part is yet to be configured. So I have to bring this whole service up and running the right way i am not there yet but i definitely i think i have done justice in showing you how the cd really would look like so this application was deployed in a continuous deployment manner so in the sense the moment someone let's say now a developer comes here and comes to the maybe an application changes maybe you go to source somewhere in the maybe maybe in the components do i have the home page Let's say come to home page and make some changes here, for example, right to the to the to the front end of add, adding a button or something, whatever. And the moment he commits his changes, the pipeline will be triggered. The pipeline will be triggered just for UI because the only UI component will be changed. Maybe we'll see see that in a while, but let me check what is the state of our current execution. Okay, view uh, is running. Sorry, this, this is completed. Uh, a new version has been deployed, but let's see about what's happening with others. Oh, nice. So I think it's uh, patient API is also running, has also deployed. Let's see now. If I go back here and let me maybe open the new thing here. I say kubectl, kubectl get pods. I think I should go and see some new parts here of patient. Huh? Oh, okay. I know. I know what's wrong here. Okay, let me fix it because of this. And rename. Oh, okay. Instead of rename, let me just copy my file here. Notepad. Okay. This is empty, Go open this. Or the best easiest way is I delete this, copy this. Okay, config. Now I should have config settings. And if I do this again, okay, you see now I have all the service up and running. Wow, amazing. So I have, Appointments API, doctor API, patient API, and UI view automatically deployed from my CI CD pipeline. I can access this also. So I can go here, do kubectl get pods or pod, name of the pod. This is listening on 8081. So I will simply say 8081. Uh, no need to specify type of nursing arguments in resource name. Okay. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Get 
should I have been saying something else? No. What did I miss? Oh my God. Um, I'm sorry. I think my brain is not working to the fullest. I'm supposed to do a port forward. I'm doing a get. Okay, so I say port forward. Uh, I think most of you are also sleeping, looks like. Uh, but I can I understand it's been a long session today, I know. Uh, if I do a local host here now and say 81, I would see I can access my service. Okay, but I still cannot make the whole thing up and running. Why? Because ah, it's running now. So you see, I am my service is running on local host because I have done a port forward. But in the reality, I will not be doing port forward at all, right? I will not be doing it. Why? Because in reality, it's going to be running in my cluster only. I will not be doing port forward. So the next stage for uh, for this is that I will be doing some ingress settings to access my API or I will be creating my services with load balancers. So that part, I think I cannot demonstrate today. I haven't, I'm not ready with that. Um, but eventually we are going to be working a lot with this application. So even though our continuous deployment part is over, uh, I will make this application up and running because the next state, next thing which you're going to be learning is actually the Prometheus and Grafana part, which is uh, the continuous monitoring. So we need to make sure that all our application which is running inside a cluster is running fine. And if there is a problem with any of the things, node, service, pods, anything, logs, anything, you immediately get an alert of some sort, right? So that part we need to learn. This comes under this keyword called as continuous monitoring. So continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous delivery, continuous security, and continuous monitoring. So these five keywords you have to actually understand. CI we learned, CD we learned, uh, continuous security we learned, Continuous testing, we'll I gave you some brief about it. Continuous testing in the sense functional as well as performance testing, that part also we do, we have to do, and then continuous monitoring. So continuous monitoring is your Grafana and Prometheus part. And once we do that, uh, this whole setup, we need up and running, right? We need up and uh, the whole setup to be up and running all the time. Only then continuous monitoring will actually work. So I will configure, fix this application. And this now doesn't come with you. DevOps engineer doesn't do these things. DevOps engineer uh, is what I have already demonstrated. To fix these problems or request URLs and this and that, developers has to pitch in because they need to. They uh, because I need to then find the what are the what is the what are the URLs for my APIs. My APIs ke kya URLs hai? Then I have to come back here and configure those URLs in my front end application under routes and environments. This is where the, these URLs are kept. So I need to configure them so that uh, it points to the right URL. Okay. Um, questions. I think I'm pretty much done with the deployment part. Any questions so far? Sir, dot AWS file. फाइल में हम जो हमारा टोकन है सीक्रेट और एक्सेस टोकन हम पुट करते थे लेकिन ये डॉट क्यूब कॉन्फिग फाइल में क्या क्यू यूज कर रहे हम वो नहीं समझ में आया सर मुझे ओके डिड यू ट्राई रनिंग क्यूब सीटीएल आपने क्यूब सीटीएल रन किया होगा ना कभी पहले राइट क्यूब सीटीएल रन किया मैंने लेकिन लोकल पे नहीं किया अभी तक ओके सो क्यूब सीटीएल लोकल पे करो चाहे कहीं और से करो क्यूब सीटीएल हमेशा एक फाइल चाहिए होती है क्यूब सीटीएल को when हाँ. you do cube ctl config get even though agar aap mini cube bhi use kar rahe ho right agar aap mini cube bhi use kar rahe ho tab bhi aapko jo context hai wo aapko ek file se aata hai wo file hoti hai cube config file wo cube config file hoti hai in a folder called as dot cube folder okay aur uske andar config naam ki ek file hoti hai uske andar cube ctl ke liye sari information hoti hai so even though you have not noticed it, noticed it because अब अभी तक अभी तक आप क्यों mini cube वगैरह use कर रहे हो, maybe आपने ध्यान नहीं दिया, but हमेशा ये file होती ही है. In any every time you install a cube ctl in any machine, this file will always be there because this is what cube ctl needs and uses. 
ऑटोमेटिकली बिहाइंड सीन एज वेल एज हेल्प बोथ इस फाइल को यूज करते हैं ओके मींस है सर अगर हमको क्यूब सीटीएल से किसी इंस्टेंस में आ, मतलब किसी ए डब्ल्यू एस पे इंस्टेंस बनाना है तो ऐसा कुछ है क्या उसमें डाल हमें पुट करना पड़ेगा एक मिनट हाँ मैं थोड़ा सा ड्रॉ करके दिखाता हूँ इफ यू हैव आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ अदर्स आल्सो हैव द सेम क्वेश्चन बट लेट मी डायग्राम लेट मी अपन द डायग्राम ओके सो द थिंग इज यू हैव अ क्लस्टर लेट से ये आपका क्लस्टर है ओके एंड इस क्लस्टर को आपको एक्सेस करना है ये आपका मशीन है ये आप हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल ये आपका मशीन है लेट्स से दिस इज योर मशीन इस मशीन में आपने क्यूब सी टी एल डाला हुआ है ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सेस फ्रॉम दिस मशीन टू द क्लस्टर यू नीड अ फाइल कॉल्ड एस क्यूब कॉन्फ्लिक फाइल बस इतना ही कॉन्सेप्ट है डॉट क्यूब क्योंकि क्लस्टर की जो इन्फॉर्मेशन है वो सारी इंफॉर्मेशन जो है दैट इज एक्चुअली इन साइड दिस फाइल configuration information like uh, authentication and authorization and certificates okay तो क्लस्टर की जो इंफॉर्मेशन है वो क्यूब कॉन्फ्लिक के अंदर है और इसको यूज करता है क्यूब सीटीएल टू एक्सेस द क्लस्टर ठीक है यस सर सर एक और क्वेश्चन था कि जैसा अभी हम काफी चीजें नेट पे से लेते हैं जैसे अभी हमने ईके सीटीएल को इंस्टॉल करने के लिए हमने कॉपी किया था नेट पे से तो क्या हमारा वर्किंग जहां पर रहेगा वहां पर भी ऐसा इन्वायरमेंट रहेगा कि हम नेट से हेल्प ले सकते हैं ऑफ कोर्स और कौ, कौन सीख के का, मतलब यू टेल मी कहाँ से सीख के आते हैं सब लोग मतलब जो भी दुनिया में डेवलपर है मैं एक डेवलपर हूँ मैं डेवलप्स इंजीनियर हूँ या कोई भी कोई भी है वो कहाँ से सीख रहा है अच्छा, इंटरनेट से तो राइट मतलब वर्किंग वर्किंग करते करते हमको अगर कोई प्रॉब्लम आया तो नेट पे देख सकते हैं ऑफकोर्स ओके आंसर्स ओके okay, सर मुझे लगा है कुछ रिस्ट्रिक्शन तो नहीं रहेगा ऐसा कर नहीं हो ही नहीं सकता नो वन कैन डू दैट रिस्ट्रिक्शन बिकॉज देन यू कैन नॉट वर्क ओके सर ओके एनी मोर क्वेश्चंस आकाश आप क्वेश्चन या हमारा लास्ट लास्ट वीकेंड के नो सॉरी दिस वीकेंड आई थिंक येस्टरडे वीडियो एंड लास्ट वीकेंड का संडे वाला वीडियो आई थिंक वो अपलोड नहीं हुआ था सर सिस्टम डे वीडियो अपलोड नहीं है सर येस्टरडे का तो मैंने किया है ओके उसके पहले के जो सेशन हुआ था मेरा सिस्टम हो गया डाउन मे बी आई हैड दोज वीडियोज देर आई थिंक आई ऑल्सो यूज आई क्लाउड मे बी इट्स अपलोडेड आई हैव टू गो एंड चेक But yesterday's I have uploaded okay. in the in some okay, day seventeen. Seventeen, okay. Seventeen. Uh, before that one, I think I have to find out where it is. Uh, I usually use to automatic backups, so I think somewhere I will have in my iCloud account. Uh, but I have to see. But what did we cover on, in that session? Do you, anyone remembers anything important, or what did we cover? सीआई किया होगा हमने तो बिगनिंग ऑफ द सीआई वीडियो हां 
इट वॉज द बिगनिंग ऑफ सी आई सी डी आपने उसी दिन स्टार्ट किया था डॉक्टर ए पी आई का पूरा आपने हमने काफी कुछ रिपीट किया है उसमें से राइट आई मीन इट्स नॉट समथिंग विच वी हैव डन अगेन राइट सो इवन दो दैट इज मिस्ड नथिंग इज मिस्ड बिकॉज वी हैवी रिकवर्ड इट टूडे बट एनी वे आई विल ट्राई टू फाइंड फाइंड दैट रिकॉर्डिंग वेर इट इज सर आपसे मिस हो गई क्या रिकॉर्डिंग अरे मेरा सिस्टम चला गया ना I'm using a wrong, the different system, right? I'm okay. using on Windows. I'm not on my Mac. My Mac is broken. That means I, I'm not able to open the Mac at all. Okay. Sir, मिल जाए तो upload कर दीजिएगा क्योंकि है ना हमारा जैसे पढ़ते हैं ना हम तो पूरा link से पढ़ते हैं अब बीच में अगर वो video miss हो जाएगा तो हमारा बीच का फिर miss हो जाएगा. So वो वही मैं कह रहा हूँ, right? I have this हाँ. application. इसके अंदर कंपोनेंट्स हैं, इसके अंदर फाइल है तो जो भी इवेंचुअली तुम लोग को करना है वो आज बता दिया है मैंने अच्छा सर। राइट सो अभी ऐसा आई डोंट थिंक हमने उसमें कुछ भी ऐसा किया था जिस जो कि आज कवर्ड नहीं हुआ है सो आई थिंक सेवेंटी एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ वॉट आई मे हैव डिस्कस दैट टाइम वी हैव ऑलरेडी हियर हैविंग सेट दैट आई विल ट्राई टू फाइंड इट बट इट्स नॉट इन माई कंट्रोल बिकॉज मशीन ही चालू नहीं हो रहा अगर वो मशीन के हार्ड ड्राइव पे है तो आई कैन नॉट रिट्रीव इट because i have already given it for replacement and they are going to change the whole thing so maybe even hard data is also gone so assume that i will not be able to recover that session but having said that i have to find because i do lot of backups automatic backups maybe mere icloud account mein wo shayad rakha hoga so i will go and find it okay but assume it's not there and what i'm trying to say is agar wo chala bhi gaya hai so i think nothing is missed because whole thing i tried explain today पूरा एप्लीकेशन पाइपलाइन जो बनानी है वो हमें आज आज जैसे किया वैसे ही बनानी है तब तो मैं एक ही फाइल में बता रहा था एक ही फाइल में करनी है राइट बट नाउ वी डोंट हैव टू डू दैट वी हैव कंप्लीटली चेंज आर स्ट्रेटेजी ऑफ चाइल्ड एंड पेरेंट पाइपलाइन तो ऐसा हमें बनाना है आपका असाइनमेंट इस पे बेस्ड होगा अभी सो so, अगर आपने वो एप्लीकेशन वो रिकॉर्डिंग मिस भी हो गई है सो आई थिंक दिस नथिंग मच विच गॉट मिस्ड ऐसा बोल रहा हूँ Okay, um, so I think I will not be able to cover the two topics which I originally promised. The reason I was explaining everything in detail today was just this because, अगर कुछ miss भी हो रहा है तो I think अगर कुछ past के कुछ sessions miss भी हो गए किसी के it's okay. You can start from today. मैंने I tried explaining all the things today uh, from the basic and you have a running example. What I am present what I have presented today is a running example of the whole CI/CD, right? Which worked just in front of you. It worked. uh so you try to follow this example basically i'll try to create good assignments step by step assignments kaise kaise aapko karna hai pehle kya karna hai fir kya karna hai i'll try to write all that so that you can start with it you will have just one week is week mein try karo karne ka is cheez ko uh and next week we'll start with the so i in the by the, by the time next week comes i will be done with each and every stage here with performance test as well um and then we'll look uh, i'll try to cover that topic of deployment strategies blue green deployment strategy and uh, and the rollouts and then um, uh, one more thing i discussed right uh, what was that ha uh, pull based and based and push based approaches so with that part we also will discuss next time next week but now by the time next week please complete the assignment which i'm going to be giving you today or tomorrow okay cool um